Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. Today, we're talking about the ACAN M50 30mm gun pods for the AJS 37 Vigan in DCS World. The M50 gun pods have a weight of 364 kilograms, which includes the ammunition. Empty, they're 290 kilograms, but after you fire all of your ammunition, they're still going to weigh 324 kilograms as the links and casings remain in the pod. It is a 30 millimeter HE projectile. There are 150 rounds per pod and 300 total rounds when you carry both pods. They fire at 1300 rounds per minute and leave the barrel at 790 meters a second. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, they have 300 total rounds, which is more than you think it is when you're firing at something, but it still is not a lot. So you really need to pay attention to how much you fire. Now, the ACAN gun pods do have dual use. So the way this tutorial is gonna be set up is I'm gonna first cover the air to ground portion. And then after I cover all of that, I'm gonna move over to the air to air employments of which there are two modes. The technical details we've already covered, so you're not gonna to have to see those again. So let's go ahead and talk about air to ground employment. Pre-flight, your weapon selector is going to be an attack. Now this can be confusing because there is an ACAN mode, but again, the attack mode is for a ground attack. So anytime you're attacking things on the ground with the rockets or the guns, you need to be an attack. The sight mode selector is irrelevant for air to ground use, and the release mode selector needs to be in series. To deploy them, you're simply gonna have your release mode in series. You're gonna set your target QFE. You're gonna approach the target, switch into ANF. You can remain in nav and the HUD indications will only appear once you unsafe the trigger. And then once your attitude is stable and reticle is on the target, unsafe the trigger, fire during the indicated release envelope on the HUD, evade, safe the trigger and return to nav. If you've done the rocket tutorial, you'll understand that this is identical to the standard deployment for rockets. And as you can see here, as we go into the HUD indications, the HUD indications are the same as well. So when you switch into ANF, you're gonna have the vector indicator or pipper and the ring. Now it is important to note in a lot of scenarios where I've used this, I didn't have an actual target waypoint on my target. So you weren't really going to bring it into the ring to unsafe because it doesn't really matter. In this case, once you put the pipper on the target, unsafe and that's pretty much going to tell the system everything it needs to do. Between the dotted lines here you can just simply see different uh, ranging information being fed back to you so that you know how it's being used. But once you unsafe the trigger you'll have just the pipper and the distance indicator. Once the wings appear you're going to fire. It is important to note that just like the rockets two seconds before the latest firing range the distance line is going to flash. But for ACAN deployment, the site may not entirely be correct until you get the firing signal. So as a result, what I do is I put the pipper on the target, I wait for the wings to appear when they appear, I give myself a one second pull on, not even one second really, but a quick pull on the trigger just to get a nice burst out onto the target, and then I let go, and that's that. Let's go ahead, jump in the cockpit, and kind of see this all in action. So now that we're in the pit, First thing we're going to go ahead and do is change our mode. So you can see here we're going to put ourselves into attack. That's really the only thing we need to do here is we're still in series by default. Now I start my dive. See I unsafe the trigger. We're just waiting. There's the distance line. Not that important yet. We're just waiting. There's the flash. There's our cues. Notice how long I pull the trigger here. And then we're just going to kind of pull up. There's the hit. So. I'm going to show you the impact view here, and I want you just to kind of see how accurate these rounds really are. All right, so for air to air employment, there are two modes. You have radar ranging, where the CK 37 uses a locked radar signature to determine your range to your target and when to fire, and wingspan mode, which is a simple visual indication based on known variables to determine the firing distance. If you've ever used a range finder for golf, the ones that you know the height of the flag at the hole, and so you just look and you have the little markers that tell you if the flag is this tall from the bottom, it's at 300 meters, this tall, 400 meters, so on and so forth. The wingspan mode works in the exact same principle. 
So pre-flight, even though this may not be truly pre-flight because it is an air to air employment, your weapon selector is now going to be in the ACAN jacked mode. So the one, if you can see ACAN, that's the one you wanna be in. Your sight mode selector is irrelevant if you're gonna use radar ranging, but if you're gonna use the wingspan method, this is the dial you're going to turn to change the width of your wingspan. Your release mode selector will still be in series. So first off, let's talk about radar ranging deployment. So again, you're gonna be in ACAN jacked. You're gonna approach the target and switch into ANF. Your radar needs to be on in the A1 or A2 modes. You're going to place the sight dot on the target aircraft and lock it by pressing T1. Now, if you were in a Vigan, you would just pull your trigger to the first detent, which is the T1 button. And if you have a two-stage trigger and have mapped it that way, then you're gonna be very happy. Uh, I don't have a two-stage trigger on my HOTAS, but I do have a button mapped to it, which is very important because you're going to need to lock it with T1. Now, your radar screen is going to turn off, and unlike fixing a target waypoint or something like that, in this case, you're not going to press TV or anything like that. You're simply locking with T1, and that's it. From there, you'll unsafe the trigger, and then once the firing indication, so once your distance line is inside the two outer bars, you're inside the envelope and release the trigger, then evade, safe trigger, and return to nav. Let's go ahead, jump in the cockpit, and see that in action. All right, folks, now that we're back in the cockpit, we're gonna go ahead, change our master mode into ACAN jacked, and for radar, that's all we need to do right there. Now, I will point out here that I was coming out of my ground attack when I did this, so you can see how easy it is to do on the fly. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead, turn on my radar, and then I'm gonna make some adjustments with the radar as far as it being up, but that's not necessarily required. From there, I'm gonna just try to line up my target and make sure I get a good lock on it by putting the pipper on there and then pressing the T1 button. Once I've done that, you can see the radar screen went off and my HUD changed. Now you may not get the distance line right away if you're really far away. From there, it's all just about lining up and waiting for the distance line to enter inside the distance envelope, and then a nice squeeze on the trigger gives you the result you want. The final deployment mode is the wingspan mode. So from there, again, the weapon selector is going to be in the ACAN jacked position. You're gonna adjust the sight mode selector to the designated wingspan. So you need to have an idea of what you're going up against because if you're just doing this on the fly, it's gonna be very difficult to kind of set your wingspan. You need to know what you're going after. From there, approach your target and switch into ANF, unsafe your trigger, and fire when the indicated wingspan and the target's actual wingspan are matched. You're gonna aim at the indicator, so your pipper is still your point of aim, but you're gonna probably have that centered on the target while you're waiting to line up your range before you shift to what you actually wanna shoot at. From there, evade, safe the trigger, and return to nav. So let's take a moment to kind of talk about setting the wingspan in wingspan mode and what that really means. So Again, you're gonna use your sight mode selector to set this, and as you can see here in the picture, um, you're essentially trying to match the wingspan of the aircraft and that indicator. But you're not gonna be doing that when you're actually looking at the aircraft because otherwise it doesn't work. So as you can see here, uh, I'm adjusting the wingspan and you can tell how it gets wider or smaller, and I'm basing that on the known wingspan. Now, I was going up against an IL-76 for this example, and the wingspan for one of those is actually closer to 50 meters, but I'm using the 30 meter setting. So it also kind of boils into one of those, um, you kind of have to give yourself a guess based on experience. You know, I, I had the fortune of doing all the radar stuff first, and so I had a good idea about how wide it should be in my HUD, and that's kind of how I set that. So. Really, this is kind of an experiential thing. Um, I don't know exactly how that's gonna work because there's very little documentation on the wingspan mode. So, but as you can see here, this is what you're trying to achieve. Let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit and see this mode in action. All right, folks, we're back in the cockpit. I'm not gonna cover setting up the wingspan because we've already done that at this point, but I'm just gonna kind of show you a demonstration of actually doing the attack, just so you can get an idea what it's gonna look like. Alright folks, and there you have it. That's the ACAN gun tutorial. 
Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Did I miss anything? Did this clear anything up? Do you have any other tips that help people out on making this successful? Let's talk about it down below. As always, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I will catch you all next time.